going to be exploring a different kind of game today, a free-to-play first-person shooter game called Crossfire. Now this game is very nostalgic for me, and I feel like it's one of the most underrated games. So today we're going to be exploring how is it holding up in 2020, and why you should be playing Crossfire. Let's get it. Starting off with the history of this game, Crossfire was released in 2007 in Korea, 2008 in China, and 2009 in North America. To put it into perspective as to how old this game is, Counter-Strike Source was released in 2004, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive was released in 2012, so Crossfire was released right in the middle of the two. Similar free FPS games such as Soldier Front and Combat Arms were released in 2007 and 2008 respectively. By 2014, it became one of the world's top grossing online games, with 660 million players worldwide, according to Wikipedia. It went on to become one of the world's highest grossing video games of all time, having grossed $10.8 billion in lifetime revenue as of 2018. Playing this game for so many years, I would have never guessed how big Crossfire really was. Originally, Crossfire was really similar to all the other FPS games I played, but there were many cool things that kept me playing Crossfire on and off over the years. I'll show them to you now. Alright, hey guys, so for this part of the video, it's just going to be, you know, no script. I have a couple notes here with me, and I'm just going to go through the interface of this game and kind of, kind of the cool things that I really like about it. And so here we are, the, this is the interface after you log in and you here you can log into all the all the different channels um, this is North America so let's just get in with it after selecting your channel you can go to this lobby with all these different game rooms but um, and then over here your missions um, show some info room info and then you know your info like your KDR this is like 2.01 KDR not bad um, and then here you have it shows your money so GP is your in-game currency that you earn from playing games um, then ZP is the currency that you get from spending uh, real money um, and that get, gets you some exclusive weapons skins that you otherwise can't get so speaking of that let's go straight ahead into the, uh, the item shop so in this item shop you can get all your guns all your gear um, like every other game you'll have you know assault rifles um, your typical assault rifles you'll have submachine guns a couple LMGs and then you'll also kind of go into some snipers and then you have secondaries like pistols shotguns dual pistols dual shotguns and then third kind of like counter-strike you have melee weapons um, if you use the ZP, you can get um, special little fun weapons like shovels, katanas. So they're not really that much stronger, but they're just kind of like cool to have. Now, a lot of people have this issue thinking it's you know a pay to pay to win. Despite this being a free game, I will argue that you don't necessarily need any of this special guns, special melee weapons to to be good from my experience you can get for example just an AK-47 that you get at the beginning of the game and you know that one shot to a headshot and you know so you can get by just fine by AK-74 47 um, the M4A1 so those games even the pros use them so I wouldn't say that you're at a huge disadvantage from using the free to pl free to play uh, gear um, going on to the next thing characters so in this game you can get little you know hats trinkets accessories on your character that may give you you know extra experience um, where they just look cool and you can get you know goggles that help reduce flash grenade effects so I think that's pretty cool um, and all, all of this you can get with just in-game currency too, so you don't even need to spend any money. And then you can also buy little pa packages that, you know, increase your magazine. So that kind of helps a little bit, but it's not required if you don't want to spend money. And then characters, you know, this game you get, you get to buy all kinds of character skins. 
Um, right now, my character is, let's see here, it, her name is, she's a special exclusive skin. Um, she's from a female Korean pop group called Miss A. And so they, they do make uh, references to real world pop culture. And I was lucky enough to get one of the skins a long time ago when they had a like an album release. They, they had a, a collaboration with Crossfire. So that's really cool. Some of these other skins you have to use real money on. But there's, there's, no, uh, there's no stat boost or anything that you get from these guys. They just look cool. I personally play like the woman characters because I feel like um, don't don't quote me on this, but I think they're you know harder to shoot because they're slimmer, but um, that's just my opinion. And and at most pro players, you know, play female characters. Maybe they just think they're cooler. So then going on to items, you can spend in-game currency. Again, you don't have to spend real money on things like extra bags for your setups. Um, you can buy things such as experience boost. Uh, C4 setups, which will increase you know your your setup and defuse speeds. Um, some of the cool things I like here are these muzzle flames. So if you have extra you know ZP, so money to, to spend, then these are a pretty cool touch. Um, you can also change the the color of your in-game name in chat. So that's really cool. It makes you feel cool when you use it, and you're different from everybody else. And then you can also use your in-game currency to get sprays. Um, I don't really use them that much because uh, I don't have time. I just want to go out there and shoot some guys. Um, you can use uh, ZP to get um, bulletproof vest that you know reduces a little damage, but I would say it doesn't really help from my experience. And then you can get little name tags just to make your profile look a little cooler. And then you can also use money to buy you know little perks that will aid you in various game modes um, but they're not really required it's just you know little things that may or may not help and then going on to zombie mode so there's a special mode zombie mode where you have the chance to earn tickets and it seems or points and then you can use those to get cool weapons like this but I, don't, I think they're probably pretty hard to get. I haven't personally played too much of zombie mode, but it's a pretty cool. Like, just look at this. And then my favorite part, VIP. So this, unfortunately, if you want to get these cool guns, then you'll have to spend some money. But in my opinion, if you know if it's a game I'm gonna be playing a lot and it's worth worth the time, then I'll gladly you know pick. A little bit of money for just some some cool perks so these guns um, they tend to be just slightly more damaging they have little um, cool perks and boosts such as faster reloading or maybe they you can maybe melee with them if they have a special attachment maybe they give you a 10% experience boost to everyone in the, in the room um, you can see it down here what boost and perks they give um, this let's take a look at this armored beast package so that's a, quite a bit I would say that's probably maybe $200 or slightly less um, but you do get the whole package so you get this sweet ass gun this armored beast skin you also get the pistol and you get this you know dual dual sword so that's really cool I seen people with that Again, you know, M41 jewelry, it has like a cool little uh, anime bob on it. So in game, these look really cool. And they do provide, you know, a little bit of ammo, maybe faster reload, which does help. And I can understand why people think that's, you know, pay to win. But like I said, like I've seen pro players, I've seen people own me with just, you know, the, the free M481, AK-47. Um, your skill matters much more than the gun that you play and this is just one of the different kinds there's um, oh so there's a bunch of cool skins that also give little perks um, maybe 
gives you a little throwing knife, decreased fall damage, but I don't really see any red flags that give these skins a total advantage over just normal team deathmatch. Um, again, all these sweet ass skins, I wish I had them, but I felt I think one gun that I paid for is enough. I don't want to spend too much since I don't play this game as much anymore, but damn, these, these look so sick. And then Iris. Oh shit. It's a rainbow. Dang, that's cool. They really make the guns in this game look cool. Alright, going next to mileage. So, by playing the game, you know, staying online, you get MP points, mileage points, that you can use to get, you know, cool little weapons. So, this is just another example of you don't need to spend real money to. Um, get some cool things in this game um, There are some limited time weapons that you can get permanently But the majority of it I would say, you know, they allow you to buy it for a couple of a certain number of days But still it's still pretty cool um, And they're pretty powerful too. I mean AK 47 crystal is really good so dual shotguns really good and then you also get, you know, special characters with MP. So again, you don't need to spend real money. And little perks for our game modes. So that's cool. Then going on to the last thing is uh, Black Market. So this is basically just, you know, loot boxes, loot crates. You can spend real money and get, you know, some crates with cooler things. Or, you know, like I said, before many times no money at all just in-game currency and you can still get some pretty neat things um, not as cool but you know still you can get all kinds of neat guns pistols that aren't available in the store um, and that just requires uh, you know you winning GP from playing game like normal and oh one more thing and so storage, this is, you know, the storage where you can make, adjust your setup. Um, this is my main gun, the M4A1S Iron Beast. Um, that's one gun that I bought, you know, for maybe like $100, $80 a long time ago. Um, and then you can, now there's an option to create weapons if you have the right materials and also upgrade weapons. Um, so it looks like mainly just upgrades things like magazine size, experience boost, and extra bullet. So that's really cool. I don't see anything like extra damage, but yeah, I think AK-47, even the regular one is still overpowered. It really just requires, you know, good hand-eye coordination. And yeah, that should be all for this interface. I'll take it back um, to the next part of the video where I'll talk about kind of more gameplay and game mode mechanics. One thing I really enjoyed about Crossfire that differentiates itself from conventional free FPS games are the variety of game modes it presents. One of my favorites has got to be Ghost Mode. It is so unique compared to any other game that I've played. There consists of one team that guards a multitude of bomb sites, and the other team, the Ghost Team, are tasked with the goal of planting a C4 and destroying the site, similar to Search and Destroy. The twist, however, is that the Ghost Team are nearly invisible and can only use knives, so you become completely invisible if you stand still. However, once you move, you become slightly visible. The only way to hunt down the Ghost are to listen to their footsteps and to play patiently. Playing as either side will make your heart beat like crazy. Whether it's listening for the sounds of footsteps or the planting of a bomb, or silently waiting for an enemy to walk past you as you proceed to knife him in the back. This game mode provides countless opportunities for crazy clutch moments. Another one of my favorite game modes is Elimination Mode. This mode acts similarly to Search and Destroy in the sense that everybody gets one life. However, the goal is to eliminate the enemy team. No C4 is here. The twist is that instead of having your own guns, the game lays out a multitude of guns on the ground that you choose from. First come, first serve. I like to play this game mode whenever I get bored of Search and Destroy. Where Search and Destroy is more objective based, this game mode is more tailored to those who are good at team death matches, such as myself. 
The third game mode I'd like to talk about is mutation mode. In this game, players are thrown into a quarantine area in which they must defend themselves from the infected. At the start of each round, players have 20 seconds to find their best hiding spots. At the end of the 20 seconds, two random players will become infected and their goal is to spread the mutation to other players. It is possible to kill all the mutants as they do not respawn, however when they become mutated, they gain health, speed, and power, so it may be difficult to kill them. I don't play this game mode too often because I suck at it, but it can be pretty fun at times when you win. It takes a good amount of strategy and gun skill in order to defeat all the mutants unless they suck, but usually more often than not, everybody dies and mutates super quickly and the human team simply gets overwhelmed. There are so many other game modes that Crossfire has to offer such as hero mode, wave mode, boss battles, and melee only modes. However, I will leave those out of this video since I have not personally played them as much. You can find more information about the various game modes on the Crossfire website. Now to conclude, what are my overall thoughts on Crossfire and my feelings towards playing it in 2020? Honestly, even after so many years of playing it, I would say this game is still a fantastic game to play, otherwise millions of people wouldn't be playing it right now all over the globe. The core gameplay has not changed, and like many people say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. At the same time, there are still frequent patches that added new content, new items, and new game modes that keep the game fresh. Don't let the age fool you, this game is still amazing, and it is free as well. The fact that you can customize most of your gear, join clans, and chat with people in-game make this a great online experience. I don't really experience any toxic players here. The cool guns and weapons, unique game modes compared with the simple gameplay, are what keeps me coming back into this game. I really wish I had as much time to play it as I did back then as a student. However, now that I'm working as a full-time engineer, it can be hard to make time for this game when there's a bunch of other games I like to play too. Even so, I still make time to come back to this wonderful game every now and then. And that concludes my thoughts on playing Crossfire in 2020. I hope I made a somewhat compelling case for you to at least try the game out if you haven't tried. It is free after all. This is the perfect game if Counter-Strike did not suit you or perhaps you did enjoy Counter-Strike but want to try something else. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my video of Crossfire. If you thought it was informative, helpful, and you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns, criticisms about how I can improve, then please leave them in the comments below. And then as always, I'll see you in the next one.